Presenting an unusual story of love and mystery on Front Page Detective. Starring Mr. Edmund Lowe as the famed newspaper columnist and amateur detective David Chase. And now for another thrilling adventure as we accompany David Chase and watch him match wits with those who would take the law into their own hands. This is David Chase, and this is my town with millions of wonderful people. Yours truly loves them all because they're interesting people. But tonight one of them is, uh, well, shall we say, more interesting than the rest? Is that you, David? Who else are you expecting? Well, you, but much later. How come you're on time? Open up and I'll tell you. Well, well wait, I'm not dressed. I'll tell you when. Okay. Oh, something quiet for a change. Me too. From now on, let's nominate Wednesday as our quiet day. You know, I know the cutest little place we can go. David, what's that? About three weeks ago, in case you've forgotten, we were in that little antique shop on 58th Street. Oh, David, you don't mean that, that... Exactly that. Oh, but you've no business, honestly. What did you do, win the Daily Double? Well, you would buy it. It's yours. <gasps> oh, Beautiful, David. Just plain beautiful. Look at those curves. I am looking at them. Sure, but you can't afford. Gosh. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll bet it's as old as, well, I don't know what. Older. Much older. What came over you buying me a thing like that? Darling, I can deny you nothing. How about those kids? Mm, first I've heard of it. Hello? Just a moment. Uh, David, are you here? There's a man downstairs called Lawton wants to see you. Get some more dope. Uh, what's it about, Mr. Lawton? He says he has some information for your column. Oh, one of those, brother. Well, he says it's something big, David. He sounds very excited. Excited, huh? Well, if he's excited, let him come up. Uh, Mr. Lawton, come up, please. Yes, apartment 4C. Where do you want this, my dear lady? Well, now, uh, let me see. Hurry up, old Robert. There. Good evening, Mr. Chase. Well, how are you? Fine, now that I've found you. Well, that's great. I understand that you have something I use in my column. Yes. You mind if I smoke? Oh, sit down. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Uh, well, let's hear the story. Come on. Well, there's no hurry. No? Well, uh, Miss Richards and I are going out to dinner, if you don't mind. Look, don't rush me. Miss Richards, do you mind if I stay here tonight? Stay here? Yes, here in your apartment. Oh, that's a very flattering proposition, but... Well, you've got your nerve. Oh, that's all right, honey. Anything colossal, even a great nerve, is worthy of admiration. I have a very good reason to want to do this, because I've got to spend the next ten hours with you, too. Because sometime during the night, someone's going to be killed. And I've got to have an alibi that's going to stand up. Who? I'm not saying any more. Oh, yes, you are, Mr. Lawton. Now, if you know of somebody that's going to be killed... Don't you think it's your duty to try and stop it? I can't stop it. Well, the police might. I can't either. Maybe tonight, but in the long run, they wouldn't be able to either. Tonight, I've got an alibi. Well, I don't think the police are going to think much of your alibi. If you know somebody who's going to be murdered, don't report it. I think the technical term for that is, uh, accessory before the fact. I'm not worried. Look, old man, I know a friend who'd be very interested in this. Who's that? Inspector Redwoods. Well, he's a nice fellow. You'd like him. David. You're not making any phone calls. Put that phone down. Oh, turn that thing away, will you? It makes me nervous. I can't dial. You've written your last column, Mr. Chase, if you don't put that phone down. He means it, David. I think he's crazy. He's nutty as a walnut grove. You mean that you intend to keep us prisoners here? Until you can establish an alibi? That's right, and a good one. I'm going to need it. Why pick on us? There are 10 million people in this city. Well, I read his column. It seems he's been running low on material lately. I thought I'd be doing him a favor. Oh, 
Oh, a boy scout, huh? Yes, and anyway, he stands in good with the police. And I need someone they'll believe. Hey, look, uh, do you mind if Miss Richards and I go to dinner? You can well, join us if you'd like. No, I'm not hungry. Well, I am. Haven't you got something in the icebox? I'll see. I'll go with you. We'll all go. Oh, your cigarette, look! No stunts, Miss Richards. But my table, you're burning it! Oh, oh, would you mind taking that cigarette off the table, please? No, no, I won't take your gun away. I'm sorry. Oh, look what you've done, my beautiful table. All right, I'll buy you a new one. I'll have it fixed. Fixed? It took years to get a surface like that. Well, I'll get you ten of them. After tonight, I'll be able to afford it. Well, I like this one. Oh, why did you have to come here anyway? I'd rather the table burned than I did. Oh, you've got a point there. Now, uh, shall we go and see what's in the icebox? I'm afraid we can't offer you much, Mr. Lawton. Just pot luck, you know. It's just pot luck. Well, we can go over any time now. Go where? My apartment. You mean we've got to? No, not at all. I just thought you'd like to get there before the police do. It'd be nice to be a column. <laughs> I do owe you something. You say uh, there was a murder. The murder had happened in your apartment, huh? Who said anything about a murder? I thought you did, didn't you, Sheriff? Well, yes, so oh, absolutely. I said kill. But nobody would believe it wasn't murder. No one. That's what she wants. She? Yes, my wife. She hates me. There isn't anything she wouldn't do. No, I'm a bit confused. Uh, you say your wife was killed... In your, uh, killed last night? By whom? By herself. It's suicide. But if there's any way she can make it look like I did it, she would. Well, look, my dear fellow, after all, she may not have done it at all. Why don't you... Have you tried phoning home? Yes, I've phoned. There's no answer. She's done it, all right. Well, better go over and see, I guess. Well, I can't go like this, uh, David. Gosh, I feel like I stepped in my clothes all night. Oh, you wait here, honey. I'll be back soon. Be careful, honey. You know me, D.D., Daring David. That's just it. I do know you. What's that? Wait a minute. Bye now. Let me have your hat. Oh, thanks. Don. What are you doing here? I thought I told you not to come. I had to, Don. Oh, uh, this is David Chase, the columnist, Fran. How do you do? I'm Fran Bishop, a friend of Mrs. Lawton's. Have you seen Ella this morning? No, I just got here when I heard you at the door. We were worried about Mrs. Lawton. Yes, so I understand. Uh, where's her room? It's back here. How long would you say she's been dead, Mr. Chase? Well, uh, I'm not the coroner. I wouldn't say too long. A few hours, I imagine. Well, I have my alibi. Yeah, you sure have. Well, who let you in just now? I've got a key to the apartment. Well, you must have been a very good friend of Mrs. Lawton. I was a... a sort of companion. Sort of? Then, secretary... Everything. Mm -hmm. When you uh, when you left Mrs. Lawton last night, uh, did she uh, she seem upset? Yes, very. Why? Because Don had left her. Miss Bishop knows about everything naturally. She uh, she threatened to commit suicide. Yes. She was hysterical, like a crazy person. Well, why didn't you stay with her? I didn't think she'd really do it. She threatened to commit suicide often. Mm -hmm. Often, huh? Well, uh, 
Her husband didn't threaten to leave her often, did he? We might have at that, huh? She kept me chained to her for years. Threatening to kill herself if I ever left her. Well, yesterday I had enough. I wanted to be free. And rich, eh? What do you mean? Well, yesterday, uh, you said that by this morning you'd be able to buy ten tables like the one you burned. That's right. She was wealthy. I didn't have a cent. There's your motive. And did she know it? She always said that when she went, she'd take me with her somehow. That's why I have to have a foolproof alibi. You got it all right. Oh, uh, where's your phone? On the desk. In the other room. Tell me, uh... How come you were so sure she did it last night when she had threatened to do it so many times before? She never wrote a note before. Here. Read that. She wrote it yesterday. Then she handed it to me. Can you imagine somebody handing you a suicide note? I told her to go ahead. And I left. Can't tell you how sick I was of the whole thing. Dear Don, tomorrow I will be dead. I hope your conscience doesn't trouble you too much. Well, what's wrong with this as an alibi? Plenty. It's a trick. You didn't know my wife. I did. And I know she's done something. I, I don't know what, but something to make it look like I killed her. And that note ties into it somehow. You could still write that and be murdered, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yes, and I know she wouldn't take her own life without trying to pin it on me. Did your, uh, did your wife uh, often get up at four o'clock in the morning? No, why? Her alarm was set before. Wonder why. Look. Call the police. Let them ask the questions. That's yeah, a good idea. Still curious about one thing. Give me police headquarters. What's that? Did your wife know about you two? I don't understand. I mean that you two were in love. That you were going to run away with Miss Bishop, leave your wife. No. She didn't know anything about it. How did you know? No, it was just a guess. Fairly good one. Hello. Uh, tell the inspector that this is David Chase reporting a murder. Murder? You know it wasn't that. That's what I said, Sergeant. Murder. How come you don't know the combination to your own safe? It was my wife's safe. It's your home, isn't it? Home? Well, I live here. Hello. George Boyle, please. Inspector Edwards speaking. Hello, George. This is Tom. You know what happened. Yeah, terrible. I do, too. Look, George. You were Mrs. Lawton's lawyer, is that right? Mr. Lawton tells me that outside herself, you're the only one knows how to open the wall safe. Yeah, will you? I want to check the contents. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, I got it. Thanks. Sure, I'll be here. I want to ask you a few questions. Well, that's funny. The lawyer knows the combination, but her own husband doesn't. She was like that. Distrustful. That's a good reason for murder. She wasn't murdered. Don't mind him, Miss Bishop. I can't hold you, either of you. The note she left? Mr. Lawton's alibi? In my book, it's suicide. Not in mine. Someone set her alarm for four in the morning. She slept badly. She had sleeping pills beside her bed. Naturally, she took one of them and was poisoned. Maybe there were a lot of them there, so she couldn't miss. If Fran Bishop was here when we arrived, she could have thrown the poison pills out. Mrs. Lawton had only been dead a few hours. So that made his alibi look great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always got it figured out better than Einstein could do it. Well, why would she write that note? Don't make sense. She didn't say anything about suicide in the note. She said she'd be dead. She might have known they intended to kill her. I pollute I still say she did it herself. You got any idea what your wife kept in the safe, Mr. Lawton? Oh, a few jewels, negotiable bonds, the usual thing. Holy mackerel! Your idea of a few jewels. Brother. I had no idea she owned anything like that. Neither had I. And just to think, Miss Bishop, all that would belong to you if it weren't for that letter. What letter? One you just took out of the safe, holding there. It isn't true. It's a good trick, Miss Bishop, but I'm afraid it won't work. 
You better get over the inspector. It's just something personal. It has nothing to do with... Give it to me, miss, or do I have to, uh... There's nothing in it, I tell you. Come on, come on, give me that letter. You've got no right to. Oh, good, friend. Give it to him. You were right after all, Chase. It is murder. Got to take my hat off to you. Maybe it ought to be my badge. Let's not go to extremes. To whom it may concern, some years ago, I wrote a suicide note. My husband has it in his possession. I know that he and Fran Bishop are planning to get me out of the way and use that note to make it look like suicide. But I have no intention of killing myself, which is exactly what they'd like. And if ever I'm found dead, it will be murder. She said she'd get us somehow. Uh, let me have that other note, will you, the first one? You admit what she says is true, Miss Bishop? No, it's a lie. She didn't write that suicide note years ago. She wrote it last night. I told you it was a trick of some sort. She found out that Don loved me. And why shouldn't he? She'd done nothing but make his life miserable for years. She put that letter in the safe right in front of me, screaming at me, telling me that what was in it would finish me. That she'd be dead, but that Don and I'd be sorry. Not glad as we thought. That we wouldn't live to enjoy her money. She'd seen to that. So I tried to steal it. I didn't know what was in it. But I knew it was something. Some lie she'd made up. Save your strength, Miss Bishop. You'll need it when you tell that tale to the jury. Maybe the dopes will believe it, eh, Chase? Maybe, Inspector. I hope so. That's right. Hope so? Yes, uh, I wouldn't want to see an innocent girl go to the chair. Innocent man, either. Are you feeling all right, Chase? Why, even you should know that the girl is telling the truth, Inspector. Truth? Give me those papers. I've heard a lot of cock and bull stories in my life. Are you kidding or something? No, I'm afraid I don't share your attitude toward crime, Inspector. I owe you an apology, Miss Bishop. You too, Lawton. Your wife did commit suicide. Oh, you make me tired. You're always twisting everything around. If it looks like a suicide, you claim it's murder. Now, when I've got proof of a murder, oh no. By you, it's got to be suicide. Hey, wait a minute. Hold it. Are you out of your mind? He got away. What's the idea of interfering with an officer in the line of his duty? You don't want to kill an innocent man, Inspector. Innocent? He ran, didn't he? That proves he's guilty. Oh, he was panicky. I know it was stupid. But you might have done the same thing in his place. Even I might. The man's not a murderer. That's for the jury to decide, not you. The jury wouldn't have a chance to decide if I hadn't grabbed your arm. You've gone too far this time, Chase. I'm taking you down to headquarters with me. How delightful. Uh, you mind if I use the phone? What for? I want to call my lawyer. You better call about 50 of them. You'll need them. That many? All right, cut that bit about Mrs. Brian Wilson going to Reno. Well, it was true when I wrote it. She got off at Manhattan transfer and came back. <laughs> oh, it's a woman's privilege. Some change their minds, some never make them up. You're short on copy, huh? All right, I'll have some news for you by the time we go to press if I have to stick up a bank to do it. Mm hmm <laughs> I promise. Okay. A promise? <laughs> I'd like to tell that guy just what your promises are worth. Ah, oh, darling, I'm sorry. Will you promise not to make one phone call all through lunch? Forgive me, I know. You spend as much time with me as you spend on the telephone, and as much time on the phone as you spent with me, the telephone would feel very lonely. But if I bought it, the kind of lunch I'm going to buy you. Well, lunch is not what I need, but a boyfriend with strictly definite office hours and a phobia against phones. But darling, believe me, I'm developing one. Uh, David? <clears throat> I won't touch it, I promise. Why, sir? Hello. Uh, this is Mr. Chase, upstairs maid. <laughs> Who? Uh, just a moment. It's your alibi. Which one? Not a blonde. It's Lawton. Lawton? How did he know I was here? Well, what are you waiting for? Talk to him. I must. All right. Yes? Oh, hello, Lawton. Yeah, I'm out on bail. 
Yeah, I know. I saw the story in the papers. But thanks for what you did, Mr. Chase. Yeah, I know. I, I guess I should have stayed put, but, well, I, I was scared. I, I didn't know what to do. Look, I don't like to ask you to do anything else, but, well, I haven't anyone to turn to. I haven't got a cent, and I can't get out of town or anything. Look, could, could, could you meet me someplace? I don't see how. You'll be picked up. There's a dragnet out for you. Yeah, yeah, I know, but uh, i got to talk to you. Tell me, have you the keys of that apartment of yours? Yes. Yeah, I'll meet you there. My apartment? For Chase? That's the last place they've been looking for you. And they know you're a smart guy. They wouldn't think you're that stupid. Well, if you say so, when do you want to meet me? I'll see you there tonight. Now, don't go roaming around the town in broad daylight. Yeah, I'll bring you some money. Okay, keep your chin up. Now, look, if that telephone rings again, promise me you won't pick it up, will you? You're blaming me for you having talked to Lawton? Well, honey, you picked up the phone. I didn't. I just want to state it for the record. Come here. Who's there? Chase. Got to thinking you weren't coming. You give me credit for more sense than I've got. If it keys that desk. Why, yes. Open up that center drawer, will you? Anything you say. Did you bring the money? I said I would. You've done a lot for me, Mr. Chase, but, but I'll pay you back. I've done nothing for you but give you an alibi. And there, you left me no choice. Well, you come here, you didn't have to. Not for you alone. I'm doing this for Miss Bishop. I think she got a tough break getting mixed up with a character like you. I want to prove that she's innocent. To do that, I have to prove that you are, too. Now, oh, this is what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I thought I'd find it here somewhere. What are you going to do? Phone Inspector Redwood. Why? Tell him to come over here. You're what? Now, put that gun away. Now, don't worry. As soon as Edwards finds out that you and Fan Bishop are innocent, he'll release you immediately. Yeah, but he'll want proof. I've got it. Where? Right here. How do you figure that, Chase? Well, I noticed something about that suicide note. There was a brown mark in the bottom corner of the paper. Uh, have you got it there? Well, sure, I've got it. But this is evidence. District Attorney gets it. Well, there's no harm taking another look at it, is there? Look, I don't see why I should... Uh... Now, Inspector, I've always given you a fair break in my column, haven't I? Sometimes much fairer than you deserve. You wouldn't be trying to blackmail me. Oh, no, no. I'm simply trying to help you. Now, it won't look good for you to keep two people under arrest when it's as plain as the nose in your face that they're both innocent. People might wonder how efficient you are. Let them. You've seen them once. Now, look, now, I'd why like should to I... see the second uh, note. You know, the one in the uh, safe. Well, no tricks now, Chase. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's a mark on that one, too. Faint, but it's exactly in the same place. It seems very odd. The two notes written a long time apart, according to Mrs. Lawton would have marks like that on them exactly in the same place. There. What does it prove? Doesn't prove anything without that box. You see, I know something about Mr. Lawton that you don't. I was unlucky enough to spend a whole night with him. Well? Well, he has a very disgusting habit of leaving cigarette butts all over the place. On chairs, tables, even antique tables. Left one burning on that box, which burnt through and scorched the top pieces of paper in the box. Which proves conclusively that those two notes were not written years apart, as Mrs. Lawton would have us believe, but were written one right after another. In fact, they were written on the top two pieces of paper in that box. Hmm. I see what you mean. David, look who's here again. Oh, brother. There's nothing in the icebox. Oh, I hope I'm not disturbing you. What's the matter? You need another alibi? No, but I'm the kind of a guy who keeps his word, Miss Richards. I promised you an antique table, and they don't come any antiquer than this one. Oh, and there's no cigarette burns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got rid of that habit. How are you, Mr. Chase? And thanks again. Uh -huh. Not at all. <laughs> oh, uh, I hope you got a good column out of it, like I said. David. You've learned something from this case. I have? What's that? Your cigarette is burning the table. Oh. Oh. 
another exciting mystery, read Front Page Detective magazine. And tune in next week, same time, same station, for another thrilling episode of Front Page Detective on television. You're invited to be with David Chase as he again unravels a case of mystery and intrigue on Front Page Detective.